Welcome to Art or Something Like It. A television series about artists of all genres Backgrounds. and media. From music, performance, writing, and poetry. <laughs> to photography, sculpture, film, and video. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hey, welcome to Blend Films. This is my animation studio. Come on in. I'm Patrick Smith. I'm an independent animator. I work in New York City. I make uh, traditionally hand-drawn animated short films. This is where I keep my film prints and other stuff. Um, like, for example, my first film, Drink. Uh, this is, I, I did this film back in 2000. Drink is about a kid that drinks this mysterious green liquid and, and a bunch of people crawl out of his mouth. I started working in animation about uh, 15 years ago. Uh, I, came, I moved to New York in 1994, and um, I, I started in television. I worked on uh, Beavis and Butthead as a, as a designer and a layout artist. And then I, I continued on to uh, work on several different projects within the city, including The Doug Show. I don't know if you know that from Nickelodeon. And then I finally started directing uh, series. Uh, the, first, the first show I directed was called Downtown. That was when I really started uh, realizing that I want to go on my own and I want to create my own films. Uh, after Downtown, I directed a show called Daria. And uh, Daria is a very dialogue-driven show. And it was very, it was kind of frustrating because you really had to trim the dialogue really tight in order to cram the whole show into 20 minutes. So around this time is when I finished uh, my first short film, which really just took advantage of, 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 of the idea of not having any dialogue. And uh, I got into the whole pantomime way of making films. After, after I did Drink, uh, I did a film called Delivery, uh, with, which, um, which was done in 2003. It was, it was a little longer, as you can see. It's a, it's a 10 minute long film. And uh, Delivery is, is kind of a personal story about, it's about two brothers who kind of beat the crap out of each other. And uh, my, my brother, Dave, used to, used to grab me by my face and actually lift me off the ground and then throw me across the room. And uh, that was the first scene I animated in, in delivery. And uh, that kind of, I, I kind of carved the film out of that uh, sequence. After a delivery, I did a film called Handshake. Handshake was a weird film. It was the easiest film I've ever drawn. Uh, it only took me about eight months to animate, which in, in terms of making a film is nothing. And I think it, I think it was so easy because it was so emotionally charged. And, and when, when I was drawing the images, they, were, they really were what I had already gone through. So they came fairly easy to me. And uh, what you have is two people that meet at a bus stop and they get tangled up in each other after a handshake. And w what happens after this, after this huge struggle is that the guy gets uh, kind of consumed by the woman. She ends up alone at the bus stop until another unsuspecting guy comes in at the end. But it's not a bitter film, it's more of just a autobiographical film. Thank you. 
I don't like cartoons that just exist to make you laugh. In real life, if an anvil dropped on the head of one of my characters, he would die a miserable death. Uh, he wouldn't, you know, bounce around and laugh and, 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 and do all the antics that cartoon characters do. And I've, not, I've never liked that about cartoons. There's an element of realism that I want to bring into animation that typically doesn't exist, uh, say, on, you know, on Cartoon Network or something. And then my last film is, is a film called Puppet. Uh, uh, this, was, uh, this premiered at Tribeca Film Festival last year. And um, Puppet is kind of about how your, uh, your career can get the best of you and how you're, you can become obsessed with work. And it's basically about uh, a hand puppet that comes to life and just starts beating the crap out of the kid that made him. I guess it's the closest thing I've ever done to a comedy, um, although there are parts of it that aren't really all that funny. It's kind of scary, actually. So. I keep my films pretty rough because I don't, I don't, I never want the audience to forget that they're watching uh, uh, pencil drawings. You know, it, it's I think it's a quality that 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 I it, my films have and the films that I really enjoy have. So I just wanted to show how basically a traditional animator draws two drawings and they're they're kind of close together, but one it, one is a little different. In this case, it's a little more squash and it creates the illusion of movement. And when you flip several of these together, uh, it, it creates a motion where th this is a character um, actually screaming. <laughs> Another thing uh, I do here at the studio is, is these, uh, these columns. And these are, these are sold through a gallery here in New York. And I also put them out in the street for public consumption. And th this was kind of a reaction to animation. You're, you're so often trapped in the, in the aspect ratio of the screen. So when I, when I finally got to do something that is, is off the screen, I kind of went the radically, radically the other direction. There's no way you could have this type of aspect ratio in animation. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a way for me to, um, to escape the confines of the, of the movie screen. And this is basically the same idea, uh, except it's, it's put on canvas. And, uh, You'll recognize some of this imagery is similar to my film Handshake, which the idea of people actually stuck together is, is, uh, is combined with the other idea of people piled on top of one another. Painting and animation, they go together really nicely because one's a break from the other. You know, you can only animate for so long, or at least I can, before you just go crazy. Thanks for coming by. Uh, I hope you enjoyed art or something like it. Uh, if you want to know more information about me, you can go to my website, patsmith.com. And thanks for watching. See ya. Back in the good old days, when every carnival had a sideshow, there was an act that was tucked in the back end. They had all the rides. And there you'd find a tent. Inside that tent, there was a pit. And inside that pit, there was a wild man from parts unknown. Hi there, I'm Magic Brian, and this might look strange to some of you, but this is very common for me. Every day I sit on my kitchen countertop and I try to get out of my straitjacket. Really, I do. And people pay good money and watch in horror <laughs> as a wild man would walk around his pen and he'd find the biggest, fattest, purdiest chicken. And he'd pick it up in his hands and he'd bring it close to his face. And then he would bite! And then he would drink its blood! And then he would laugh! <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, this was the Geek Act. And tonight, I want to pay tribute to this classic act with a demonstration. So tonight, I'll be doing my demonstration, my tribute, using... A rubber chicken! I take magic lightly. I don't try to take it too seriously, because magic is fun. It's, it, the idea is that we're getting paid to cheat people, to lie to people. And uh, if you take it too seriously, I feel like it's belittling people. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a real rubber 
turn chicken. <laughs> so I warn you now, if you have a weak heart or stomach, for God's sakes, look away! So I'm gonna do it! I think art is a little something like this. Now that's art. I have several different shows. I have a, my stage show, which is a variety of crazy, wacky, outrageous comedy magic and sideshow. I have a street show, which is mostly me escaping from a straitjacket and 40 feet of chain. Um, I also do close-up walk-around magic with a variety of things, cards, coins, sponge rabbits. Um, I also perform as a character called Dr. Frangible, who's an old-timey snake oil salesman. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dr. Frangible. Now, I'm a very different kind of doctor. You see, I'm against the art of today's medicine, the whole pharmaceutical underworld. Instead, I choose to devote my time and energies to magic in the world of the bazaar. I demonstrate my latest product. It's called Dr. Frangible's Electric Lemonjack Juice. The ingredients of which are a concoction of gels and oils, painstakingly extracted out of the hair of only the most masculine and virile of lumberjacks, as they rested after a day of cutting down trees and playing forest games. Ladies and gentlemen, there's hundreds of amazing uses for Dr. Frangible's electric lumberjack juice that you would find for your human body. God bless Dr. Frangible's electric lumberjack juice. Available in 98 delicious flavors. Ladies and gentlemen, some side effects of electric lumberjack juice include stiffness, blindness, loss of hair, loss of sight, um, Diarrhea, lots of it, like for hours. These are just some of the side effects you may face, but I assure you uh, the benefits of the juice are quite extraordinary, quite, quite extraordinary indeed. Outside of magic, I perform as a character with a friend called the Randy Brothers, and uh, there's no magic at all. I get to wear a wig and put on a mustache and wear a shirt and a tie and sing goofy songs and just play. A butcher, he worked all the live long day. He came home from work now, he came home, and this is what he had to say. He said, it's getting mighty cold out, cold out. You'll need something warm to wear. <laughs> Had a little free time, free time. So this is what he made with care. Said, I made you both a meat shirt, a meat shirt. A neat shirt, a neat shirt made from things people normally eat. You know, I work with, uh, I've worked with the most tattooed man in the world. I've worked with a lizard man, and uh, I've worked with people with half their faces tattooed, uh, midgets and fat people, bearded ladies, and it's just, they're my, you know, they're the people that I work with. They're my office mates. Can you guys give me a drum roll on the chairs, at the table, whatever, like the mouse? and spit it back up on the neck, restoring the chicken to its former state. <laughs> you have a weak heart or something, for God's sake! <laughs> Fuck away! Can I get another drum roll? It's really good. <laughs> Thanks for watching Art or Something Like It, and if you want to find out more about me, visit my website at www.magicbrian.com. Whoa! Hello, I'm Robert Foreman. I make paintings by gluing thread to board.
This is where I work and my most important tools are glue, scissors, and my screwdriver. Same screwdriver I've worked with since 1969. It's Elmer's glue, you put some down. I did yarn for 20 years. I thought I was the only one doing it. One gallery has told me, he said, I hate to say it, but I think there's something perverse about you. If yarn was a real technique, you wouldn't be the only person doing it. It was pretty depressing. A week or so later, I'm walking Greenwich Village and I saw someone selling a, a yarn painting. I said, gee, that person does what I do. And I bought it and I found out about the Weechel Indians in Mexico. Never heard of them. Never wanted to leave my studio. The next day I called up Washington and they said, well, we can't tell you over the phone that you have it, but that sounds like an intriguing study. Maybe you should do it. My application was, I want to go to Mexico and talk shop with my fellow yarn painters. I f sometimes find, until I do a picture of something, I don't really understand it. But in the process of the picture, it's a way of my learning about what I'm doing a picture of. When I went to Mexico, I told the Fulbright that I would do a picture based on my experience there. I'd never done a picture based on an experience of a trip, but once I went out there and said I would do it, I figured out how to do it, and that was the adventure. This is my painting journey. This picture has a story, and it starts in my home with my wife and cats, my, the bris of my nephews. I took an airplane, this is the house where I live, went to Mexico, saw the friends I used to see, I was there for five days and then there was time to leave and I knew I would never make the three day walk back with my hurt knee. But my friend Lino lent me his son and two mules and my three day journey ended up being a 12 hour mule ride back. I remember being in Mexico City with a very good Huichol yarn painter, Refugio Gonzalez, and I complained to him that a lot of times people look at my work and they think it's craft and they don't think of me as an artist. Refugio turned to me and said, listen Robert, I'm an Indian. I could do anything and it'll always be folk art. This is my picture collection. My mother died, I got all her dolls, and it became an altar, I guess, for my mother. And that's why, when I thought of what I should frame it with, and my dad was about to throw out her old bed, I thought it was a perfect use of it. So there's my mother's bed, her and her doll collection, and I guess this is an homage to my mom, and it's my painting collection. If you look at the picture, there are three different color lines on it, because there are three pictures here. This is a picture of walking my dogs. So I have two dogs, Rebecca, Jonah, and this is what I see. I'm behind them walking them. Jonah, as you see, is looking at Rebecca, and he sees what I don't see, which is there's a cat behind there. Of course, Rebecca is looking at another dog's rear end, which they like to look at, and pigeons, other things that I probably that I don't notice on the ground. So we've, I, the idea of the picture is it's a consensus view of I'm walking the dogs is what the three of us see all put together. When I formulate my picture, I'm thinking of the picture, it's really what you see when you're away from the picture, the way it all blends together. But I would think looking at them, you'd want to go up close and see how I do it, that that's part of the fun of it. But the, the idea of the picture is the picture from a few feet away. This is my picture of birth. It's based on the birth of my daughter, Amelia. This picture is based on three things I put together. One was an Afghan war rug, and then I had a, a a quilt, a baby quilt someone gave us, and all the toys we bought for her. And then the third picture, which you can see here, this is her being born and pulling her out of my wife's belly. It was a cesarean thing. This is my wife's head. That's the um, thing they're pulling her out. It's the, the thing about birth, the, the joy of having a child and the fear of all the th things that come with it. And I tried to put those three things together to make this picture birth. So this is my vision, Jonah's vision, Rebecca's vision. And so every third string is a different person, so I have to just decide where I am. And this one's easy because it's all one color the whole way up. And you snip it. It takes time, but it's not a difficult technique. Things are pretty frenetic today. Lots of things are happening at once. and. 
I mean, I walk down the street with my iPod on, I'm listening, walking with people, I'm walking, the cars are going, there are a lot of things happening at once, and I think the, the thread's a perfect medium for that, because I can put three or four images down at the same time, and depending on how you look at it, you can see one part more than the other, but they all come together, and I think that what we see isn't a single vision. It's not, when I started, when I would just go out with my pad and draw a single thing, and I'd have to stay still while everything was running around I mean, that's not really the way we see the world. I think the way I'm working now is closer to that. This picture is Chinatown. This is my newest picture, the picture most recently done. It's of Chinatown here in New York, my favorite neighborhood. So there's an overlay of all the different signs that I see in Chinatown, and then all the places. China Town is the closest, is sort of what I like about Mexico, is the open market, all the food, everything being out there on the street. To me, it's the most exciting neighborhood in New York, and I love to go there. Thank you for watching Art or Something Like It. To see more of my work, go to my gallery, Francis Nauman, at 22 East 80th Street, or my website, glueyarn.com. Thank you. It's 98 degrees out, and I'm wearing black. Genius? You decide. My name is Ken Rao. I write, play rhythm guitar, and sing for a band called the Baghdadias out of the Lower East Side. And tonight, on the program Art or Something Like It, we're going inside Otto Shrunken Head, where the music is always free, seven nights a week, 538 14th Street between Avenues A and B. We're going to be interviewed, we're going to do a few songs, we're going to talk about our new CD, we're going to talk about the scene. Come on inside. Come on. What should it matter? Why should I care? How can you go on if you're not there? If you're not there? And welcome to Art or Something Like It. Again, I'm Ken Rao, and with me are my fellow Baghdadios. Uh, that's Mark Burnham right there. Hello. And that's Phil Machach. It's your cervix. Yes. Mark plays guitar, Phil plays bass. Uh, Neil Richter is our drummer. He couldn't be with us today. He had to work. And uh, so we figured we'd uh, just jam out a little bit on a semi-unplugged uh, sort of, you know, a half-assed, three-quarter plug kind of thing. And uh, we figured we'd get the songs across. Well, the part of thigh sucks And the sewers explode The cops rip you off When your car gets towed I love it! Everything that goes into these songs is pretty much autobiographical. And since I'm doing the all the writing, I guess it's sort of like the gospel according to me. And uh, if I have a bad day at work, you're going to hear about it in six months. We'd like to do a song about a friend of ours in rehab. His name is Neil. I'll be on the song. It's called Neil's in Rehab. <laughs> Neil's not really in rehab, well, is he? He's not here. Uh, we're not quite sure exactly where he is. <laughs> we're assuming, though, that whatever he's doing, that it's pretty much um, being monitored by, by the authorities. Let's ask ourselves a question. What do we want to do when we grow up? I never want to grow up. I always wanted to be a porn star. <laughs> Hey, wasn't there something in the paper about us, Ken? Funny you should mention that, Mark. But on page 36 of the March 30th edition of the New York Daily News, we do a benefit show every year for New York City's homeless. It started 10 years ago, 
this, uh, this December, it'll be 10 years, uh, where we get as many bands together as possible. We pay for, uh, play for no payment, and uh, we collect blankets at the door. And on Christmas Eve, and other nights of the year, because now we've got more blankets than we can handle, we drive around and we handle blankets to anybody in the street who needs them on the freezing streets of New York City. Christmas at CBGB's in itself is a, is a complete labor of love. Um, like I had mentioned earlier, it was the third ever venue the Baghdadias had ever played at. Uh, I had always been in love with the place ever since I was a kid. It's that legendary place, and you know I only grew up like you know scant 30, 40 miles from it. And yet that was the place where like you know the police played, and, you know uh, the Ramones, of course, you know television. <laughs> I uh, was dating a girl uh, who's going to school up in New Haven, Connecticut, and uh, I went with her to a wedding, and the groom-to-be kept walking around. He kept introducing me to everybody. It's going, uh, the girl's name is Shalane Tense. I'm screaming the name in the song. And uh, he's like, this is Shalane's boyfriend, Chad. He's a punk rocker. He's going to write a grunge tune for her. And it was funny the first 23, 24 times, but after a while, it got a little bit played. Gut, the whole idea behind gut wrench is that, you know, when you fall for somebody, when you're so in love with somebody, you are in agony because it's like, oh God, I care about you and I don't know if we're on the same page and oh God, I'm going to get my heart ripped out and ah, you know, and next thing you know, this just comes rolling out of you. Hey guys, thanks a bunch for watching us on Art or Something Like It. Uh, we're the Baghdadios. If you want to hear more about us, you can go to www.baghdadios, and that's spelled with the H, as in Baghdad, B-A-G-H-D-A-D-D-I-O-S.com. If you want to know about our benefit for the homeless, which we've done every year for the last 10 years, you can go to www.blankfest, B-L-A-N-K-F-E-S-T.com. We also have a MySpace page. That's myspace.com forward slash the Baghdadios. If there's anything else you want, just uh, email us at surfvietnam at hotmail.com. You're watching art or something like it. We were on an ocean liner, you know nothing could be finer than to travel through the wet blue yonder. So we took him the view and we chatted That's when we knew just what we have to do. We went. <gasps> <gasps>